What up, y'all? In this video, we're going to talk about the transpose operator in MATLAB that will allow us to transpose a column vector and turn it into a row vector, transpose a row vector to turn it into a column vector, and also transpose matrices. Let's jump right in with a definition. We see that a transpose of a column vector takes an n by 1 column vector and turns it into a 1 by n row vector. So if we start with x in Rn, that means there are n rows and one column. When we take x transpose, each of the rows of x turns into a column of the transpose. In other words, the transpose turns column vectors into row vectors. The ith row becomes the ith column. In order to take transposes in MATLAB, we use the single quotation mark. We'll go ahead and learn more about that by typing help transpose into the command prompt. This documentation highlights that the single quotation mark is used to take transposes of matrices. Notice there's also a function called transpose of A. If we click on the documentation itself, we will be led to a larger discussion of how this works, including specific examples of how to use the transpose function. We're going to work through some of our own in this video. To start this process, let's go ahead and define a 5x5 five five matrix called I5, and that will be the 5x5 five five identity matrix. Then what we're going to do is start picking off individual columns. Let's say that E1 is the first column of that matrix. We'll say E2 is the second column of that matrix. Specifically, we'll say take I5, which is the 5x5 five five identity, and then take all rows in the second column. Under this definition, we saw that the size of our first column was a 5 by 1. If I now take E1 transpose, that's going to produce a 1 by 5. Indeed, if I take the size of the answer, that is a 1 by 5, meaning this transpose operator transformed a 5 by 1 into a 1 by 5 simply by swapping rows and columns. We can check that again. E2 is a 5 by 1 storing the second column of the 5 by 5 identity matrix. When I take E2 transpose, that produces a 1 by 5, which happens when I take the second column and swap it into an individual row. In other words, the transpose of a column vector becomes a row vector. Using similar reasoning, we can say that if we start with a 1 by n row vector, let's call it y, the transpose of a row vector is an n by 1 column vector. Specifically, if we started with 1 by n, y1, y2, all the way to yn, each in individual columns, then when I take y transpose, that row vector turns into a column vector with the exact same entries, except that the kth column turns into the kth row in the transpose. Here we see a visual representation of that concept. In MATLAB, we use the single quotation mark to achieve a transpose. Let's set y equal to a standard counting vector that we've seen in previous videos. If I then hit y transpose with a single quotation mark, this will produce a 8 by 1 column vector. This implies that we can actually build column vectors using colon notation. Specifically, let's say that x starts at negative 8, goes up by 2s, and goes all the way to positive 8. but Let's go ahead and put parentheses around this. This vector right here is going to be a row vector. When I put it in parentheses, I say generate that row vector and then afterwards turn it into a column vector. Notice that's exactly what we have here, even though if I were to take this particular single quotation mark off, I would indeed generate a row vector. One interesting note is if I do not include the parentheses, MATLAB creates a row vector. When I include the parentheses, MATLAB creates that column vector because it takes the original row vector and transforms it into a column. Because MATLAB has kind of a finicky mechanism to deal with row vectors generated through column notation using the transpose, I recommend using the transpose function if you want to turn a colon notation row vector into a column vector, which is exactly what we see here. That avoids the possibility of confusion if I, for some reason, forget to put parentheses. And it makes it super easy for other people reading your code to recognize what it is that you're doing. The same can be said for a use of lin space. Suppose we want to find a vector that is equally spaced, starts at 10, 
goes up to 20 and has six elements, Linspace is going to create a row vector under this call and return it to this variable assignment. If I put a little transpose on the outside of that, that row vector will automatically be turned into a column vector and then the result will be stored in variable A. That is exactly what we see in that call. Notice I could have achieved the exact same results if I had done the transpose of the linspace function with my desired inputs. As we've seen, the transpose operator turns column vectors into row vectors. It also turns row vectors into column vectors, could you guess what the transpose operator does to matrices? Ding, 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 you got it. The transpose of a matrix swaps all rows and columns. In other words, it kind of rotates the matrix along the main diagonal, almost as if I'm flipping the entries around. If we start with an M by N matrix A with real valued coefficients, we say that the transpose of A denoted by A to the T, so this is actually read A transpose, that's not an exponent, it's a transpose. That new matrix is an N by M matrix where the ith row of the transpose is actually the ith column of A and the kth column of the transpose is the kth row of A. In other words, I'm literally swapping the rows and columns of A in order to form its transpose. Of course, we're going to test that mechanism out in MATLAB. To do so, we want to generate some matrices. Here's where I want to show you how to do this quickly using libraries of test matrices that are automatically available in MATLAB. To know more about this, let's go ahead and type help gallery. This will produce a long list of test matrices that are automatically stored in MATLAB. Let's go ahead and dig into this a little bit. Gallery is a HIEM test matrices. HIEM is the name of a famous mathematician. Specifically, if we type in any browser, Nick HIEM. He is currently at the University of Manchester, has a ton of results in different uh, fields of matrix analysis. You have some information about him. He's written multiple books. Point is that I think he probably was instrumental in having this particular gallery function written. So when you see this high M test matrices, that's kind of a shout out to Nicholas high M. Here we're seeing that the way that we call this function gallery, on the left hand side, we define an array. On the right hand side, we say gallery and then left parentheses, right parentheses. We have something called the matrix name and then a number of parameters that follow this. The matrix name is a string that names the specific family of matrices we want to use. And in fact, if we look down here, there are a bunch of different family of matrices that we can use. Binomial family of matrices, Cauchy, Chebyshev, Forsyth. A lot of these are named for famous mathematicians that use them first. I'm not going to worry too much about all of this. I want to expose you to the fact that this exists and show you how to use it. As you become more sophisticated, you can use the gallery function to test out different algorithms that you're writing. That's actually what it's designed to do, to test the work that you're doing on MATLAB on famous matrices. We're going to focus on some subsets of this. One of them is going to be the Dramada matrix. The other one's going to be the GCD family of matrices, and then also something called a Henkel matrix. I encourage you to click on the documentation and read more. We're going to work through this together. Let's go ahead and set A equal to gallery. Remember, that's the function we're working on. And then here, we're going to call this the Dramada matrix family, and this is going to be a four by four matrix. The Dramada family is kind of special because this matrix has all integer coefficients. And if I take the inverse of this matrix to actually find the inverse, it will also have all integer coefficients. That's one of the special properties of this family of matrices. The reason that I want to call this out, however, is this matrix is non-symmetric and relatively easy to understand the individual entries. Remember, when we take the transpose, the individual columns are going to turn to individual rows. Specifically, let's go ahead and take a transpose. Notice column one, one, zero, zero, one, becomes row one in the transpose, one, zero, zero, one. Column two, 
one one zero zero becomes row two one one zero zero that continues we'll go all the way to the last column column four of this matrix is one zero one one row four of the transpose is one zero one one we could have equally said transpose of a and that would produce the exact same transpose oops matlab is getting mad because i used a capital rather than a lowercase MATLAB always uses lowercase for built-in functions. This is indeed what I meant to do, lowercase t transpose. One of the really nice things about using the gallery function is I can actually create very, very large matrices with special mathematical meaning just by typing in a different dimension. Remember, if I say gallery dromada, that's gonna be the dromada family of matrices. Last time, the other parameter that I put, which was the dimensions, was four. If I now put 10, notice this produces a 10 by 10 matrix. This allows me to generate a large selection of matrices quite quickly. All I have to do is actually to work through the documentation. Let's go back to the documentation for the gallery function. So here we go, help gallery. We're actually gonna try another one, which is called rando. It's kind of like Rambo, but not at all. So in this case, we look at rando, which is random matrix with elements negative one, zero, one. Let's go ahead and type that in. So we'll clear this. We'll go ahead and say B is equal to gallery of rando. And then let's call this a five by five. Hmm, that's really interesting. It said that it should be zero, negative one and one, but the actual matrix only has zeros and ones. That's because this particular family of matrices has a third parameter. Indeed, if I actually type gallery into the help documentation search bar, click on the appropriate atom, and then scroll down to the table that describes all the different matrix families that are available to me. Let's go down to rando. So keep going to R and here we go. Rando provides a random matrix composed of elements negative one, zero, or one, but it has three parameters. First, it has the matrix name, which is in this case, Rando. Then I have the dimensions of that matrix is gonna be square. And then the third parameter inputs the type of distribution that we want. So in this situation, if K is one, or it's the default value, if I don't specify, that is automatically what K is set for. That will produce either zero or one for the entries. If K is two, it will be negative one or one. And if K is three, I will get either negative one, one or zero, all with equal probability. Let's go back here, do a five by five and set K equal to three. Notice I have produced a matrix that has either zeros, ones or negative ones where this is a random distribution. Let's go ahead and take a look at the first column of that matrix, which is negative one, zero, negative one, one, zero. If I take the first column transposed, notice that I turn that column vector into this row vector. Moreover, if I take the transpose of my entire random matrix, this will take all columns and turns it into all rows. Let's do just one last example. And we'll, in this case, we're gonna do a Henkel matrix with factorial elements. In order to do that, we're gonna use the matrix name IPJ factorial. Let's go back over here. We'll say that C is gonna be gallery. And for this example, we're gonna type IPJ factorial. And we'll say that this is a five by five. Henkel matrices are really special because they have bands in the opposite direction, we'll see more about this, that have equal values. Notice that if you go up this diagonal direction, all the elements along that band have the same value, 120, 120, 120, 120, 24, 24, 24. Notice also that the individual elements of this matrix are factorial valued, so this is two factorial, two times one, Right below that is three factorial, one times two times three, four factorial is 24, five factorial is 120, six factorial is 720. This matrix that we're using has that special property. The reason I wanted to call this out is because when I take the transpose of this matrix, I get the exact same matrix back. In other words, if I say C minus C transpose, I get a zero matrix. We'll talk more about matrix operations in this form 
in a later video. The point of this though is that some matrices, when we take their transposes, return the exact same matrix back. We'll see that in later videos as something called a symmetric matrix. We gotta be a little bit careful with symmetric matrices. The ith column of a symmetric matrix is identical to the ith row of that matrix, which means when I take the transpose, I do nothing significant. That concludes the tutorial part of this video where we've seen how to turn row vectors into column vectors column vectors into row vectors, and swap the rows and the columns of a matrix, all using the transpose operator. This leads very nicely into today's community challenge. In the comment section below, please post ideas or links about how transposes show up in real world modeling. This is very much related to physics, quantum mechanics, and many of the conservation of energy properties that occur in the natural world. I won't talk more about that, but I'll leave it as a challenge to you viewers to go find information and post that down in the bottom. Of course, I always welcome your questions and comments. Thank you for your attention. I'll see you in another video.